Okay, today I'm going to be putting a levitating flying disc in my vacuum chamber. So I got this awesome toy from a company called Banggoods. I'll put the link in the description. It's only about five bucks and it's really fun to play with. So the reason I wanna put this in my vacuum chamber because we wanna check if it will spin forever in the vacuum chamber. So the assumption is that when you spin it in air, the main reason it stops spinning and eventually falls is due to the air resistance. So if you take away all the air around it, will it stop spinning? And then after the vacuum chamber, I'll show you if you do end up buying one of these, I wanna show you some tips on how to get it to work because when I first got it, I thought there's no way that it's ever going to stay in place. It seemed like when I, when I was trying it, I was like, there's no way it's going to float on top because it just flew off every single time. There's, I could not get it to work. But I kept trying and trying and found a video online and eventually I was able to get it work. So I'll give you a few tips on how to get it spinning because it's really fun once you do get it spinning. So how this works is there's a round magnet inside of here and there's also a magnet inside of here and they're opposite poles. And so there's a region of stability in the center here, but if you just try to set it down, it just flips over because it wants to flip so that the magnets are opposite and they attract each other. But if you spin it, then it makes it stable because spinning gyroscopes, they want to stay in their same plane and they don't want to tip. So if you get it spinning fast enough, then it won't tip over and it'll just stay in this stable region and float above the magnet. So first, let's just spin it in normal air and see how long it spins. Okay, there we go. So the comparison in the vacuum is gonna be a little hard because it really depends on how good this first spin is. So I got some longer spins than that earlier. It's hard to repeat how long it spins. It really depends on how flat your current surface is and everything. So there's a lot of variability here, but the real question is, will it spin forever in a vacuum chamber? So regardless of how good my initial spin is, let's see if it will spin forever in a vacuum. Okay, now to get it spinning. Okay, go for it. Okay, we're down to 0.8 atmospheres already. Looks pretty stable. We're at 0.5 atmospheres, half atmospheric pressure. We're down to 0.2 atmospheres. There's very little air in there right now. Point 0.1 atmospheres, so there's hardly any air resistance now. The air is very thin in there. If you had a drone in there, it couldn't fly at this pressure. Okay, we're about at full vacuum now. So now go ahead and pause this video and make your guess in the comments section if you think it will just keep spinning forever or if you think it will stop. If you think it'll stop, let me know why you think it'll stop even without air. Oh, and it finally fell. So we can see that in the vacuum chamber, this indeed does not spin forever. So why did this happen? Why doesn't it spin forever in the vacuum chamber if there's no air or virtually no air around it? 
The reason is because even though it's levitating above the magnet, you still can't get rid of friction. So this is the same reason that my pendulum stops swinging in the vacuum chamber, also the fidget spinner stop. And the reason is because you truly can't get rid of friction in this system. So when it's spinning on top of the magnet here, it's actually wobbling a little bit and it's pushing against the, the round magnet that's inside of here. And that round magnet is moving a little tiny bit. And that friction is slowing this down. So even though it's floating above it, they're communicating with each other through the magnetic field and it's slowing it down and it wobbles more and more. It's slowing the spin down because this magnet is moving and eventually the spin slows down enough and it makes the spin unstable until it eventually flips over and falls. So even though it is floating in air, it's still in communication with the magnet that's on the ground that's slightly moving and sliding inside of there and it does have friction. So eventually this will slow down and stop in a vacuum. So the question then is, can anything just spin forever? So what about if I were in orbit with this spinning disc? So let's say I was in space and I just spun it. Would it just continue spinning? So it's not in communication with any magnet touching anything that can slow it down. It's just in orbit, orbiting around the Earth or wherever it is, and it's spinning. So there's nothing to stop it from spinning. So you could think that this will spin forever. One of the best examples of an object spinning in space is the Earth. The Earth has been spinning for a long time and it's not going to stop anytime soon. So the next question you may ask is, can anything keep spinning indefinitely forever even in space? And the answer to that is still no. And that's because just like just like our disc on the magnet here was in communication with the magnet so it eventually slowed down. That's true even in space. Even though there may be nothing near this object spinning, it's still getting hit by cosmic background radiation that are slowing it down ever so slightly and eventually it will stop. Another reason is because a spinning object also gives off gravitational waves. So it's actually communicating with every other object in the universe and that is slowing the disc down also. So eventually, every spinning object will come to a stop. It may be longer than the lifetime of the universe, but it can't spin forever. So actually, nothing can spin forever, especially not in a vacuum chamber on Earth. First, I would get the larger washer and two smaller ones and put it on your disc. And it comes with a little elastic band you can put on. Okay, so this is the first technique that you have to get down. You have to spin it like a top. So without the magnet, it's really easy to spin. It's easy to spin a top. But on the magnet, it's really hard because it wants to flip. See how if you just set it there, it wants to flip over. And so it's like you're, an oppo you're opposing a force when you spin it. So it's hard to get. You have to do it with a good amount of force to get it spinning. Most of the time, even when I do it still, Oh, I did it good that time. See, it's spinning now, but as soon as it slows down a little bit, it just flips over. So if you don't get the spin right, it pops off or falls over. So first, get that down of just letting it spin and sit there. It actually stabilizes itself if it's spinning good. So the next thing you need to get down is lifting it up. So you have to lift it up until down here it's not stable, but up here the higher you get, the more stable it gets until it's in the perfect zone where it will begin to float. And so as you lift it up, you'll feel that you're, you have, you'll feel the weight of it, but as you lift it higher and higher, you'll feel it start to lift up until eventually it will pop off of your carrying stick here. So this is what it looks like if it's too heavy. You try to lift it up and you can feel it lifting up a little bit, but it just comes right back down. So that's too heavy. And then this is if it's too light. <laughs> See, that was way too light. It just flies off of it. So I can't even get it to spin because it's too light. So I would start out with it too heavy and then remove a little tiny weight. They have these little tiny ones you can remove 
and try to adjust it until it's just too heavy to float. So I'm gonna put on a plastic one, then one of these, and then another small plastic one, and then an elastic to hold it. So I think this weight should be about right. Another thing is that in order to, this has to be perfectly level and you, it comes with these little wedges that you stick under it to get it perfectly level. If it always floats off to one side, then put the wedge on that side to even it out. It's, it's, once you do it a few times, it's easy to tell which way it's tilting. And there we go. So if you do it just right, you get it in the sweet spot and it'll just stay spinning there. Really cool. So if you get it really good, I've got mine to stay for like maybe two or three minutes spinning and then it eventually falls. Um, but you have to get a really good spin that stays really stable. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments about this video, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and remember to hit that bell button to be notified when the latest video is out and we'll see you next time.